What's up, what's up, what's up? The thing I want to talk about is a guy named Dennis Danzig. So the Wall Street Journal just posted an article entitled One Man's Unlikely Quest to Power the World with Magnets. You probably notice I've got quite a bit of um, in and out bags. Uh, this, These are just props for a shoot. There's nothing in here. Nobody could eat that much. And why would I put that many bags of actual in and out I get a new car. It's got white seats. I want greasy ass bags of in and out just hanging all out. No, trust me. It's not real in and out. I know I'm selling this too hard. Okay. Woo. Dennis Danzig. About to go down in history alongside mm, whoever made the printing press. Fuck, I should know that. Edison, Franklin, I should know more great inventor. The guy has invented, I gotta pull up this article. Stop and go traffic, it's fine. The car drives itself, it's fine. Dennis Danzig has invented a whirly gig. Whirly gig, okay. That calls for the suspension of disbelief and the laws of physics. It's not a perpetual motion machine, but it's damn close, apparently. You just push it and it starts going and then it just keeps fucking going. I will get it started for you. This has no starter on it in any way. It has no uh, motor to drive it. Uh, we have to put a little bit of inertia power into it to get it going and then it'll be engaged and uh, it will get it uh, running up so we can show you the various functions of it. That should be enough, and then we'll go ahead and engage the engine. It's just, it gets set in motion, and it starts turning, and it turns a, a turbine that produces electricity, and it's run by magnets. So these magnets are set up in a way that they can keep these cylinders spinning. Not perpetual motion, but can't tell you when it's going to stop. Set one of these up next to every wind turbine. You got energy forever. Okay. The one he has going right now is called Chris, the crystal. He's got different sizes. Uh, I guess it, the different weights of the cylinders um, are able to produce different amounts of energy and maybe run different lengths of time. I, I don't know. If this turns out to be real, which physics, physicists are skeptical. This could be, you know, way bigger than wind and solar. This is just free energy. It's just happening. There's, you don't have to depend on nature. Um, wow. Wow. They say it defies the laws of physics. I mean, if this thing works and it's some new discovery of a way to harness energy just out of nowhere, um, we, it could be, it could change the world in the same ways that the steam engine and discovering electricity and harnessing the atom. Let's find out who made the steam engine. Hey Siri, who created the steam engine? Yes. Who invented the steam engine? The, the steam two. engine was invented by Thomas Don't Newcomen. all talk at once. I found two, James Watt and Thomas Newcomen. Two dudes, James Watt and Thomas Newcomb. Nobody knows their name. Hey Siri, who discovered electricity? That's Benjamin Franklin. Okay, I found this on the web for who discovered electricity. Check it out. It's not just Benjamin Franklin. There's apparently some debate over whether Benjamin Franklin discovered electricity. Okay. Whoa, in 600 BC, the ancient Greeks discovered that rubbing fur on amber caused an attraction between the two. So what the Greeks discovered was actually static electricity. So 600 BC, some Greek guys rubbed some furs together, discovered electricity. Take that, Benjamin Franklin. I don't know why I'm mad at Benjamin Franklin, but we all thought he was the discoverer of electricity. Uh-uh, Greeks with fur. So just take it, take it, Ben. Oh my God. There was actually some discoveries of Roman pots lined with copper believed to be batteries to produce light at ancient Roman sites. Benjamin Franklin. Late to the party, bud. Who is responsible for atomic energy? Who harnessed the atom? That's a lot to read. So let's, so let's, let's put it on auto drive. 
Lise Meitner and Fritz Strassmann. Okay, well, Manhattan Project. So let's just say Dennis Danzig, this guy's so confident that his contraption works, he's not worried about scientific journals and, and physicists you know, vetting him. He's just gone ahead and started his own company. So Dennis Danzig is now in production. He's got investors. They're trying to get this thing off the ground and make sales and install this thing. That's how confident this guy is. Screw the scientific community and whether or not they think the physics checks out. If the, if the thing works, let's sell it. So that's the kind of thing that makes me think this is real. Clients are gonna be able to figure out very quickly whether or not this is saving them on their electricity bill. Their bills either go up or it goes down. It's, it's, a, it's an A or a B, it's a one or a zero. Either he's gonna run the biggest scam and a couple of sales in, he'll fail. And who would do that knowing that it's so easy to check and see if it works? I, I just don't see someone doing that. If you look at the videos, there's a tour of the facility and there's a lot of people working there. They're making very highly technical looking pieces of machinery for, for the contraption. And I mean, I'm no physicist, and I, but I understand that physicists are skeptical, but if he's already going into production, it seems real. And if it's real, this could be bigger, bigger than fusion. Like just stop working on fusion, we got it. We got the energy problem solved. I mean, we still need battery technology to to store the energy. So battery technology still has to progress in order for us to really take advantage of this. But the creation, the generation of basically just free energy that just works without worrying about wind or the sun, works all through the night. Biggest invention of our time. If you've read about Dennis and his crystal engine, and you know something I don't, hit me up in the comments. I'm also putting all these videos up on minds.com. Follow me there if you're on there.